name is uh, Kim Simonson. I'm a sculptor and I live in uh, Finland in a small village called Fiskars. Well, I work with ceramics and uh, mostly in figurative ceramic. Uh, I chose ceramics by mistake. I wanted to become a painter, but I wasn't accepted to the painting or the art academy to the painting school. And then as a kind of a joke, I applied for a ceramic and glass department in the design school. And I was accepted to the design school, the glass and ceramic department, and there I fell in love with the material ceramics. Uh, ceramic is the most ancient uh, sculpting material. You can uh, sculpt with clay almost anything from uh, modernist uh, minimalist work to the most intricate figures. It's a very, very material that gives you freedom to do almost anything you want. I use two different techniques, uh, hand building and uh, then I also use plaster molds. I like to combine these two techniques. With plaster molds you make the working faster and then you, after you have had the basic shape come out from the mold, then you start hand building and free molding that figure. In the uh, early 2000s I was living in Toronto, Canada, working in this, uh, as a resident artist in the art center. And I had some glass artist friends who used this flocking tool on their glass objects. I remember that tool uh, 10 years ago and I was searching for new surfaces on my objects. And I remember it was a very interesting tool. So then I decided to buy the machine and also many different colors of flock. Uh, I wasn't very happy with what, what I made. And then I had uh, this sculpture that I had painted black that I wasn't happy with either. And I had this neon yellow flock that I thought was very ugly. So I decided that let's just put this neon yellow on this black sculpture. And suddenly it turned into this very strange green surface. And I was living at that time in a, in a residency in a Finnish uh, forest that had a very beautiful moss-covered trees and plants. And uh, I realized that this looks like moss. And so I decided to start to make these figures that would be covered with moss. I started to make uh, these children, uh, anarchistic children sculptures 20 years ago. They were very heavily inspired by uh, Japanese popular culture and some uh, contemporary artists like Takashi Murakami and Yoshito Monara. I became quite well known in Finland, especially by uh, this kind of porcelain figure life-size child that is spitting a glass spit. They were very kind of polished sculptures. And uh, when I came up with this uh, moss surface, I realized that it, it works quite well on these more expressive figures. So then I started to make more, more rougher surface on the sculptures, more expressive figures. And then I started to make this kind of uh, children who are living in the forest and who are maybe more character than the, my earlier sculptures. Usually I have a, I have an idea of a position that the figure will stand in. I model that on myself in the studio. I stand in a straight or in a certain position and then I start to sculpt. Uh, because I use the plaster mold I get the legs and the body from the mold and then I can twist the legs and the body in a position I want it to be in. I don't draw, I, I used to draw when I was younger a lot, but once I realized that sculpting is the way I want to work, I, I stopped drawing almost completely. Then uh, after the figure is ready, I, for me there's three elements. What kind of shape it is in, what kind of clothes it will have, and what kind of hairstyle it will have. And once uh, the, the figure is ready and it's fi been fired, then I start with the, to see what kind of things I have in my studio that I can then put on the object and give it a story and a concept. I have uh, decided that uh, I don't want to make a work that is in any way preaching or I'm telling people how to think. I grew up in a very small uh, 
religions family or like a Seventh-day Adventist family. They had very strict rules, so I got very fed up with all these rules and people telling who is good and who is bad, etc. My work, of course, I live in this world and they are very much connected to whatever I experience in this world and what I read in the news and what I see in the TV and what I read in the books. But I try to keep them quite vague in what position they are in, in politically or ethically and so on. They are kind of just these figures from a parallel reality that don't really have any direct meaning or saying. It's only the viewer who then makes up if they want to see in the object some kind of a political statement or something else. My work has technically evolved a lot since I started to make uh, most figures about six years ago. Before that I was making much more static sculptures. They were more uh, similar like uh, comic characters or, or this kind of uh, popular culture characters. With these uh, most figures I wanted to make them more alive, more natural and more expressive. And so I had to kind of learn a new technique to work with my figures. And uh, I had to learn how to do more realistic uh, positioning of the figures, how, how the weight and all these things are on the, affects the, the shape of the figure and so on and so forth. And all these things take a long time to learn and you only learn them by making. So now I start to feel that I have developed my own style of uh, more balanced figures and that uh, I am happy with. I think uh, I will continue developing this and uh, because it will take a long time to master something and I, I have still a way to go. Yes, I'm very happy that I have been able to do this installation to Space Monte Cristo, that I got this option because it's, uh, you don't often get uh, this nice space and, uh, and the freedom to, to do the kind of installation you just can do in only in your dreams. I would like to make, uh, of course, even bigger versions of this. This could be a good start. Usually my sculptures are on pedestals in a white gallery space. Now it becomes more alive, my sculptures. They become uh, not only just one object, but now they become a whole world. And uh, of course I would like to develop this, this thing more in the future. I have always had this uh, dream of being able to make people feel something when they see my sculptures. It's not, they don't have any kind of uh, answers to anything or, or they don't, I'm not really studying anything with them. They are more just these uh, figures that uh, I think, I hope, can affect people emotionally. And uh, through that feeling of emotion, they feel alive and human. <laughs>